Boxing Corner Casuals podcast, man. I'm here. Got another South Londoner. I had to deal with one yesterday as well. But we got Ellis with us, man. Ellis Zorro, um, former du- European champion. Um, like I say to you, he's been busy. He's been active over the last kind of, uh, I say, year or so, right? Um, yeah. In terms of what you've been doing. But um, obviously, we're going to that shortly. Just for people that don't know, obviously, um, Ellis is a cruiserweight. Uh, boxer uh, competing at a professional level, um, but yeah, man, um, how you been, Alice? You all good? I'm good, bro. Yeah, man, yeah. obviously, a couple of weeks ago now, I come off a loss for the British title, so yeah, yeah, man, obviously, still carrying a little bit of frustration, but I'm sure yeah. we'll get into all of that still. No, 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 no. Yeah, defo, defo, man, and like I said to you as well, it's difficult because you know, in them scenarios, there, you, you I, I suppose, with what you do as well. It's like the fight finishes, and then you you kind of need time to switch off, and regardless of a win or lose, because the adrenaline yeah. or necessarily the the thing in it. So, yeah. you know, um, just out of curiosity as well, like for people that don't know, where did the boxing journey start? Because if we could start there, it'd be quite interesting to see, because you've predominantly for a long time is fighting on what people call small hall shows, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, and then obviously there was uh. The, the, Sort of recently, you got we can talk about that, but you had the Jay Opatea in Saudi, and mm-hmm. then you fought Chef Clark just recently for the British. But, um, it wasn't always the plain sailing with the big shows, was it? No, so from the get go, like if we just go right back, um, I thought I told the story a few times. I started boxing at Bruno University in 2023, I graduated mm-hmm. in 2024, and I had my first fight in uni basically um it was kind of like a my uni was a sporting uni so that the amateur club like it was registered as an aba club at the time hmm. so i had my first bout there but it was kind of just like a i don't even think i had done any proper sparring like I sorry don't... one second Alex. sorry yeah. one second <laughs> Sorry, bro. Sorry yeah, about that. Visitors, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Go on, sorry, carry on, carry on. Um, but no, yeah, so I started boxing university, had one bout there, it wasn't really proper, but I won, like I stopped the guy. And then yeah. basically 2014, I graduated. I'd only had one amateur fight at this point. Took time out because, you know, when you graduate, it's like, mumsy's on me to get a job and do all that thing. <laughs> so I'm working and like, but yeah. I'm still like flirting with the boxing a little bit. And then um, had a second amateur fight at the Lynn in Peckham. That was that my amateur club that I was based at. Mm. Yeah, stopped the guy there and then had a third. And then after that, long story short, but like when I was boxing in the amateurs at this time, like you have the ABA yeah. and you have the Alliance. So some clubs yeah. that were next door to each other, for example, they weren't in the same organization. So say like, you got the Lynn, which I was mm. at in Peckham. Then you got Double Jab, which is in New Cross. Now they're next door to each other in terms of location. But like the Lynn was in the Alliance and uh, Double Jab was in the ABA. So we couldn't actually fight each other. So it was very difficult at the time to get bouts to fight guys, if that makes sense. Um, so I was just training and I wasn't really fighting. Long story short, I went to Miguel's. That's where I met, you know, uh, Isaac Chamberlain, Richard Reactor, uh, John Harding Jr. Who else was there? Ted Bammy. He was like the main trainer at the time. Uh, so Chris Congo, yeah. all them boys over there at the time. Um, and I, I think a few of them were like 3 and 0, 2 and 0. I think Isaac was the most experienced. He was getting ready to fight Lawrence Okoli, I think, at the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I was sparring these guys, you know, watching them train, like, training with them. And I was like, I weren't levels, but I weren't like far behind, like, if that mm. makes sense. Like you could see there was more experience than whatnot. But I was like, right, like I can do this this pro thing. Like if I apply myself and keep learning at the rate that I was. Because just to stop you there as well, because you said this on Combat Kings, you've always been an athlete though, isn't it? Yeah. In yeah, terms yeah, of yeah. what you've been doing through sprinting or uh everything. Sorry, yeah, carry on. Yeah, yeah. So um, so yeah, I had that kind of confidence in the sense of like I wasn't afraid of like getting fit and getting strong and learning a new skill kind of thing. That was, that was calm. Um, so yeah, I turned professional with three amateur fights, no real training. I just went to Steve Goodwin <laughs> and I was just like, yo, how can I, me and my cousin went. And when we went in the office, he was kind of like just laughing at us. Not like laughing, haha, but like kind of like, sometimes I was saying things and he was chuckling. 
Yeah. Oh, you know, if I can, you know, fight for a Southern Area title in a, in a few years, that would be good. And he was just like chuckling. Can you sell any tickets? I was like, I don't even know. But like, obviously, I, I knew people in the area, if that makes sense, like where I grew up and whatever. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, I had people around me kind of things. So I thought, oh, yeah, I can move 100 tickets. And that's all he was interested in, to be fair. And that's small hall boxing for you. That's that is though, isn't it? They, 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 the ticket selling is a main thing, and it's really it's it's one of them things as well because you can be super talented, but mm. obviously if you're not selling tickets, there's no benefit to have the promoter having you on the show. Yeah, um, and I think for him, he wasn't interested. Like he'd never seen me box on that end, but I was like, yeah, I can move a hundred tickets. And then for my first few fights, I think I was selling like over a hundred, over hundred and twenty. And now that I look back, I'm thinking, why was people even coming to watch, man? Like. <laughs> <laughs> they, no one knew I was watching that, if that makes sense. I think people were just like supporting man and like intrigued themselves. So um yeah, turned over first first amp, first pro fight. I won that. And then bro, the ball just I just one thing with Steve Gooden, I gotta rate him. Well, not rate him, but like I was selling tickets often, so I was like quite active. Mm. I think I got to nine and oh or ten and oh in in three years which is slightly active, like, um, and that was me learning my experience. I was learning on the job. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, bro, man, like, a lot of people talk about, oh, I've had 10 amateur fights, I've had five amateur fights, I've not had no amateur fights, but I've had white collar fights. But I think with me, it was just more a thing of, like, if you look at a lot of them people that have, that might say that, they've had a mentor or a trainer with them who's, like, established. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A lot, a lot of these guys get pushed by big promoters as well. That, well, that like, helps. Say like a lot of people that I'm not compared to like that stylistically, not like that, but just the amateur thing, like Anthony Yard, Fabio Wardley. Anthony Yard, I think, had twelve amateur fights. I remember going to watch him when he won the Haringey's. He was a problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> he was just knocking guys out in the he's, Haringey's. He's mad aggressive though, isn't he? It's just it was, always so, been. It's always been but, for him. But, but, yes. But my point is, it's like, I think he was 12 amateur fighters or something like that. But he, um, when he turned pro or when he turned over kind of thing, he was working with Tunde. Yeah, yeah. He's got like bags of experience, you know, that contacts, working like, yeah. under Don Charles. He's got contacts or whatever. Like he could steer him really well. Then you got Fabio Wardley and tipping my hat to him. When people have mentioned me comparing to him, it's like, right, like he was working, picked up by Dylan White. Can't get... At that point in his career where Dylan was, you can't really get better experience than that. You feel me? So, whereas me, my amateur fights, like, I weren't working with no one. When I turned over, I still weren't working with no one until I got to, like, um, in terms of training, I would say 6-0. I got Mickey Burke. Um, and he put me up. And then I went I went 6-0 to 10-0 with Mickey. And in, th in that space is when I learned the most I'd like the most I'd learn about boxing to be fair. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so in terms of how I got into it, it was very like just rolling the dice. I remember even at like six and I was like, wow, like, I'm six and like I'm just I'm just winging it, bro. Like I'm still working at the time. Um because because you were what was it? What was that thing you saying? You worked nights? Yeah, I was working nights. I had bro between, between... so initially I was working in HR full time nine to five. Then I think by my second fight, I dropped out of the nine to five and I was just working nights. Um, then I was working in a warehouse. I had a few jobs still between my debut and that's and between when did I win the boxer? Like 11 and 0? 2022, wasn't it? Yeah, so well. I was. I went in there 11 and 0. And I think obviously when I hit yeah. that, that's when I like stopped working kind of thing. So I was always like doing something like working in the warehouse, doing deliveries, personal training. And like, sometimes I was using to have used that money to like sell tickets kind of thing. So sometimes I'm saying I'm selling tickets, but I'm not really selling tickets. It's my own piece, if that makes sense. Like when I got yeah. to a certain, you know. Um, so yeah, bro, like I was just winging it, man. I was just winging it until I until I really got with Mickey, and I thought, right, like, I can do something here because Mickey kind of took me sparring other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To see other people like, right, these are the levels. Started to get punched up a bit by a few men and then started to hold my own with other men. I'm like, right, like these are the levels. And but I just had a. Yeah. No, I was going to say, do you feel like, you know, and I know you've been quite vocal about this online before, yeah, certain criticism that say people would get, be it yourself or other fighters. But mm. where you've just described what you've done, 
what you had to do to get to where you are now obviously mm. it's, you know it wasn't a straight journey to even get on the shows you're doing now mm. um but do you not fit do you feel as if people don't really see that side of things the working nights or selling tit like basically breaking even just to fight realistically you're not walking out up if that makes sense yeah i think uh I think people don't know about it, but if I'm honest, I feel like people don't really like care about it. If mm. I'm honest, like, do I think it's wrong? Maybe a little bit. Like, does it matter? I, I don't know. You know, it's just like, I do think there's like outside of the boxing community, like a lot of people don't know about small hall boxing, about ticket selling, about money. Also, Bro, I think they, when they see you on TV, especially when you're like undercard, like, if you're on the undercard, I think they see you on TV and they think you're making a lot of money. And it's like a lot of times you're not like the person ain't making a lot of money. Do you know what I mean? Or as much as you might think, just because you hear the status or you hear the occupation of our professional boxer who fights on TV, like by the time they take home, do you know what I mean, bro? It's not as much as as, as people actually think. Well, you, but... you ask you ask a 16-year-old kid, yeah, who watches boxing, for example, yeah, but like they watch their favorite fighters, yeah. And you ask them how many promotional companies are in the UK, the man are going to say Queensbury and they're going to mm. say Matru. Yeah. Some of them might say Boxer now, but th there's three, yeah. yeah? Do you see yeah. what I'm trying to say? So I let yeah. yeah, I get what you're saying. Like, it's unless you, and I probably, maybe it was the same for you before you started boxing, before mm -hmm. you really, really got involved with small halls. For you, I, was it mm. ever a thing of, no, I'm going to have to go bit. from here to Matru? A little bit, a little bit but like, Again, bro, not to be difficult, but I was just winging it, man. Like, yeah. I was just like, I weren't really on a thing of, oh, I want to be world champion or I want to fight for match or whatever, fight on Queensbury, you know, that kind of thing. It was just like, if I can win a Southern Area title, like, but it was just, as time went on, you know, things got more serious. I was, one thing that was consistent was that I was very consistent. I was in the gym. Do you know what I mean? I'd have mm. bad spars, get beat up a lot, have to learn, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. And I think that mindset and that, I guess, that habit, that way of life, I still carry that now, even when I'm losing fights now. Do you know what I mean? Do you, like my do you, mindset. Do you think you've learned? Do you think you've learned? Obviously, we'll go into it later on, but just quickly, when you mentioned that point, do you think you've learned quite a lot, especially from, say, the, the, the losses of a recent anything? I, because you know you get certain fighters yeah who can sort of go like not saying because you you had some really difficult fights obviously on the way up obviously jose yeah. burton was your what your best sort of wins obviously that was to win the european wasn't it yeah. so um in terms of but i'm saying like you know you get some fighters who like the records um like for me and this is my personal opinion like i feel like obviously we've obviously seen wilder lose again um yeah. And mm. for me, as just my personal opinion, I mm. always think his best win was Ortiz. And it's like, and, mm. and it's like, other than that, he won the belt off. You can only beat who's in front of you for the world title. Yeah, 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 but yeah. I'm saying, like, obviously, Stavern, like, that was who he won the title off. Other mm. than that, I mean, you ask anyone who has that argument about them, no one can really name the fight as well as for. So it's like, d mm. d does the records. Do you learn what I'm trying to say is you do you learn a lot from just cruising through or you need them hard battles as well, wins or losses? Yeah, I think I think I guess I'm a bit biased, but like you know, my 10th professional fight was my 13th fight ever. Yeah. You know what I mean, so win, lose, draw. Obviously, at that point I, I was winning, I won my 10th pro fight, but like I'm still learning. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um when I went to the boxer at 11 and 0, went 12, 13, 14, I'm still learning. Do you know what I mean? And when I say I'm still learning, it's like, I'm, I'm not just saying that. Like, I'm going through things in the ring where I'm like, oh, I haven't experienced this before. I'm learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, next yeah. time I'm going to do this. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, yeah. they're wins. So people don't always like, and this ain't just for me, but like, just like, I think at any level, like when you're going through things in the fight, someone breaks your nose in a fight. Do you know what I mean? Like, how am I going to coast through the next two rounds? with a broken nose like that's a learning experience bro do you know what i mean whether you're yeah. at the top of the sport or the bottom of the sport so um i don't think anybody well, ever yeah. stops don't think anybody ever stops learning um yeah for me i think i'm still learning as well to be honest with you yeah like i think we'll move on to it but what what's most like painful about this loss 
for the British is that like it weren't a learning thing. Do you know what I mean? Like it weren't yeah. mm. um it weren't a mistake thing per se. Like it was just, yeah, we'll get into it. But yeah, like I think, yeah, every fight that I've had, I've I've learned something new, whether in the build up to the fight, yeah, even like on the way to the ring, you know, you yeah, learn yeah. about yourself, like you learn about other people. This is what I'm gonna do next time, or I'm not gonna do this next time, like everything, nutrition, like training camp, you're always learning, bro. Like yeah, I'll just do you know what nutrition is a thing that seems to creep up quite a lot as well. It's quite very important in terms of I was just speaking to a nutritionist a couple of weeks ago, go on the podcast, Williams Nutrition, and he was, you know, it's 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 something where um it gives you that edge, I suppose, or it can give you that edge. I'll probably say like 20 years ago, yeah, man weren't really doing nutrition. They weren't, they yeah, weren't this is the thing, like if no one's doing it, then it's it's kind of calm. Do you know mm. what I mean? But like where now, like, you have people that I think there's still a field where people are doing it, but then there's people that are really doing it properly, like, supplementing and blah, 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 blah. Um, but then there's people, there's still people that are not doing it at all, maybe due to financial reasons kind of thing. Like, you can kind of see how it does have an impact. But, um, yeah, I would say that it does have an impact kind yeah. of thing. For sure. That's, for sure. that's as well. And obviously, well, we'll go into it, but obviously you talk about that as well. And I know Greeny mentioned it as well uh, before in a podcast, but winning that title against a European title against Jose and, Bur um, and Burton to get to where you got to in terms yeah. of you've been on that journey of basically fighting essentially to 10, 11 and 0, no experience, really learning on the job. The achievement to win a European title, which I think yeah, people don't realise to win a title at a professional level, but it's not easy. Yeah. You see what I'm yeah, trying no, to say? It's not, it's not but like... Oh, I don't know, man. Yeah, like, yeah. How can I articulate this? Like, it's not easy, but like, as each fight went on, like I said, the turn pro just winging confident. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, as each fight goes on, man's getting more and more confident. Like, I'm sparring, I'm sparring, I'm getting better in in, in the training. It's the training camps. But that, you look, like, at, you look at the people you're sp you were sparring as well. Like you said, you got in there, you was training with that the React Pause Chamberlains. Obviously, mm. them them guys, them guys. When this episode comes out, them guys would have fought at Crystal mm. Palace. So it's like, you know, big card there. Um, and I'm saying, as in, like, where where they've got to in terms of like your your your. I don't know, obviously where you are now, but I mean, like, where you was and you're, you're training with these guys. Naturally, you're going to improve, right? Yeah, so. and even like, I keep it real. Like, even kind of to this day, like, I've sparred. In terms of top level cruiserweights that I've sparred, I probably sparred Isaac the most. Yeah. Yeah. From and it's not been a whole heap of times, but like the most times, you know. Um yeah. I sparred him when I first started, like here and there, like went at Miguel's with Ted Bammy. It was only like two and three rounds kind of thing. Um and then we sparred again when he was with um, I think he was with Richard's current coach over in Sutton, sparred him again. And so like, each time I'm like, like, right, like, this is the level that I want to get to in terms of ability, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I want to get to be as good as, as he is, if that makes sense. And even like, when did I, I think I last while Isaac for the, for the Jose Burton. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's like helped bring me along a lot, to be honest with you. But like, mm. the point is in between the fights when I'm sparring, I'm gaining the confidence. Do you know what I mean? Like, or that's where I'm like, okay, that wasn't so good. Or this day was good. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably again yeah. next day. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, having people like Isaac around to spa uh, has helped. Yeah. As far Did, as, as do you feel, that's what I'm saying to you. It's like, obviously you get, so you've got to that point and I know you're quite humble with like the way you're saying it, but like that, that moment, of winning that title and then obviously because since the, the, where you've gone on to which we'll go on to in a minute mm. you've you've pushed on to like some big cards irrespective of the result which mm. i know is important to you but they're big cards yeah. so like i'm saying like from where you come from small hall to where you are now winning that european title that's going to give you weight essentially in them world rankings uh yeah yeah but you know i, I do want to say this bro like i think the reason why i got to where i got to or the reason why I even was able to forget the boxer before I won the boxer, forget the British and forget Opa yeah. Like when I got to like 10 and 0, no, 9 and 0. The reason why I was able to sign with Frank and go and uh, 
gets signed by Martin Bowers, for example. It's like, I think it's just the attitude that I've had. I've never like viewed myself of, oh, I'm doing so well, well done. You know what I mean? Like it's never been that kind of thing. It's just been a thing of like, okay, not good enough. Got to keep going back. Not good enough. Like I don't compare myself to the guys that I'd started training with when I first turned pro. Do you know what I mean? Like the, none of them are even boxing anymore. Or when I first signed with Goodwin, like other guys that was in the office that day, like, I don't even compare my like they're nowhere. Do you know what I mean? Like I used yeah. to look up to um okay, that's a, that's a stretch, but like at the time I used to spar like Wadi Camacho. I don't know if you know Wadi yeah. Camacho, but he was Southern Area champion. Isaac beat him for the Southern mm. Area title. Mm. But like Wadi for me, he was like the best in Goodwin's um stable. Stable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like a no one to someone like that. And it's like, you know what I mean? Like, not even now, but like. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, <laughs> this is what I mean. So, man's not even trying to compare my. Man, I'm not trying to compare myself to some people like, to people like Wadi. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, and I'm not knocking him. I'm just giving an example of like I didn't yeah. compare myself to people in the Goodwin stable. I compared myself to people like again the Isaac thing. And Isaac, every time we sparred, it was like he's levels above. I need to be. Do you know what I mean? Like there's something he can do that I can't do. Do you know what I mean? Or the something where it's like you can clearly see he's had more experience. How can I bridge yeah. that gap? How can I get closer? Do you know what I mean? Whereas when I sparred Wadi one time, I was like, I slightly got the better of Wadi. And I'm speaking on this now because Wadi's my guy. He's retired. All respect and love to him, but he's retired. So I can speak on it kind of thing. But like, I got the better of Wadi. And I could have just been like, oh, yeah, that's calm. I just got the better of Wadi Camacho. Yeah. You know, because on the small hall scene, he, he was a name. Do you know what I mean? But it's like just my mindset, my attitude was like, no, nah, like I want to be boom. I want to be boom. I want to be like realistic goals, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I weren't coming up like, oh, I need to be, I want to be better than Usyk like next month. Like it's not going to happen. <laughs> like, <laughs> but um, or at the time, what is it? Tony Belly or whoever, like David Hay, these kind of guys. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, man, just like the attitude and the mindset was just, no, nah, it's not enough. So even now, like I don't really give myself much, uh, credit um even when i won the box off because that that's that's in, like, yeah that's kind of interesting as well because I'm not, I'm not comparing myself to them man yeah anyway like because you you won that boxer tournament obviously went in there beat a couple guys like and they were good opponents as well yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously yeah. come come towards the end of it and like what you thought was going to happen didn't happen yeah and then you kind of pushed on that obviously yeah. for you if you don't mind answering about that must have been frustrating uh, yeah, because or, you know, or was it was it a thing of because you've been in the game at this point for a while, you was kind of prepared for it. I'm just gonna sense. say that like, because I've seen the bad side of the sport. Do you know what yeah. I mean? At this yeah. time, I'm like, what am I? 14 and 0. I've won the boxer. I've kind of seen the bad side of the sport. Like I've kind of been parred by bare people. Um, not like I don't want to paint this picture like me against the world. It's not like that. But like I've just my point is I've seen the bad side of the sport. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um. I didn't know stuff like that could actually happen though, because they were just selling it like they were going to sign the winner. Mm. And I think it was just more confusing because like they had Scott Forrest, Vidal Riley, yeah, Richard Riakpour. Mm. I don't think they. I can't remember if Chris Bell and Smith was really working with with them at that point. Isaac, I don't think Isaac was working with them either. Isaac was no, Isaac. Isaac was match room at that five. point. Yeah, yeah. I think he was on the Channel Five thing. I think he was on the. Channel oh, five is it? Yeah, yeah, actually, no, he was because he he left Matchroom after a Coley, in it. Yeah, and then he was on Channel Five, and he he had like a good string of string of wings, wing wins, yeah. sorry, on Channel Five. So I think at that point he was on Channel Five. But my point was, is that there was space over there for them to um sign a cruise away. Like what, like man, yeah, I'm yeah, fully yeah. Know, I just won your tournament. Like I'm right in the mix. Like why can't I? So yeah, but that didn't happen. But um. Yeah, like well, I'm hearing, like, oh, you know, they they wanted someone else to win with one of them. Another one was, oh, I'm too boring. Um, so yeah, it is what it is. But that that was a negative because you got to remember, I wasn't side to anyone at that point. So all right, cool, I've won a bit of money now, but it's like I ain't got a promotional contract. Yeah, yeah, I, ain't yeah, got yeah. No, I ain't got no security. I just come from small halls. I got a manager, but I ain't got a promotional deal. Here's big, big Sky Sports, like, and I could have got the platform, but it didn't. It didn't go that way. But everything works for a reason. Frank, I got signed with Frank. 
And Frank's done a good job. Like, bro, I can't even knock what Frank's done for me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And what Greensby Stable has done. I want to fault um, Dex Bellman. That was my next fight. That was uh, one of my toughest fights, man. Uh, that was a horrible, horrible fight. Um, Dex Bellman. And then after Dex Bellman, I had Jose Burton for the WBO European. And by the time I got to Dex, to, I, I went into the Dex Bellman fight and it was kind of like, Dex Bellman was coming up from like heavyweight. He had lost to Lyndon Arthur and Anthony mm -hmm. Yard. Um, but like, you know, he's probably looking at me the same way Hosea looked at me. Like, oh, he's like inexperienced. He's like on the it's way a big, up. It's a big jump for light heavies though. Yeah, yeah. To cruise yeah, no, no, but you know what? I had a fight at light heavy myself. So I'm not like, uh, like one of my, one of my pro fights is at light heavy. I think my third pro fight. Yeah. I'm not like a big, massive cruiserweight, you know, like a Lawrence yeah, yeah. or these guys. I weigh like, I can get a low sometimes. Do you know what I mean? No uh, chance of the bridge weight thing then. <laughs> <laughs> No, like even yeah. after the even after the cruiserweight fights, when I'm weighing in the next day, I'm not even really putting on that much weight. Oh, like really? more time, yeah, more time I'm coming in, I'm weighing in under. Uh, like the limit is ninety point seven kilos. I might be coming in like some of my fights on eighty seven point five, eighty eight point eight. I remember I tried to do like I think for this fight I can't remember what I was maybe ninety point two or something like that. Um, but yeah, so when I fought Dex Spellman. He's probably looking at me like, oh, this up and coming guy. He pushed me still. He pushed me. Mm. Like, I knew I had more uh, skill than deck. Yeah. yeah. You know? I just hadn't, and I, I knew I had heart as well, but I just had to prove. But deck brought it out of me, and then I had Hosea. And um, Hosea was maybe the best win just because the WBO title was there. He's probably the biggest name that I'd fought at that point. And he was like, you know, he had this reputation of, although I like heavyweight. He was tipped to be a world champion at one time. Uh, can we can we just clarify as well? Just tell people where Jose and Burton's from, because when I when I when I he's not he's not Mexican, is he? Because he's no, from he's, he's he's from Manchester, isn't it? Manchester, yeah. yeah. It's mad. It's mad. I couldn't get my head around that when I heard the name, but yeah, sorry, so, go um, so that was probably my bit. Obviously, main event at York Hall, like so to come from like. Steve Gooden shows that you're cool, and then I was main event. Oh, yeah. That was something that I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. That's mad. Not that's mad because again, I don't like to like. I'm how like, many? How many tickets yeah. were you selling at this point? About oh, one eighty. I sold. Yeah, yeah, but you know yeah. what? I can't lie. As soon as I won the box art and I got signed by Frank, I stopped really pushing the tickets. Then, but like, I oh, pushed really it. It's just not as much of a as an issue like you're gonna you're getting paid you're on a contract you know so you get paid regardless um but you know it's easier to sell tickets when people know your name kind of thing yeah. or when they've seen you on tv kind of thing so um yeah man that was a that that was a big fight the jose burton fight good name yeah. good fight as well like nip and tuck and then got the stoppage in the seventh so yeah bro that's how you put yourself marketed though to where you at because obviously we go on to the jail potato obviously we talk I had, a little one bit. I had one more after that yeah yes um but then you talk about the the ah oh, look hang on one second apologies greenies yeah. just replied to me you know what's he saying <laughs> uh in the middle Let's see if you can join for the last 20 20 minutes or whatever but if not it's cool I just carry on as normal. Sorry, bro. Um, so yeah, obviously you're you're now going on to big shows, like mm. in terms of where you're at now. And I'm I'm do you know what? I'm gonna stop saying it like this because I'm, I'm I've clocked how humble, like how it doesn't really phase you in it, this sort of thing. Mm. But <laughs> it's not really a pinch me moment, I suppose. But you're you're getting to this point now where you're mm. fighting uh in Saudi. Like, I'm just mm -hmm. gonna talk about that for a minute, yeah, because the whole setup in Saudi is mental, by the way. Um, yeah. But they, they've pushed worldwide, I feel like, boxing to a new mm -hmm. level now. Mm -hmm. And I sound mad dramatic when I'm saying that. And some people agree and some no, people I mean, don't. Yeah, I don't but disagree with it's, that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's mental because they're working without a budget. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. It's, yeah. it's you know, even oh, yeah, take, it's take, take away, take away the, the fighting. You've got the promos. Mm. For the events, which you just see beforehand, and the build-ups, and you know, mm. it's it's all catered for the fighters, isn't it? But what was that experience like going there and doing? Uh, the I can't. I, I think it was as mad for me as it was for everybody else. Do you know what I mean? Like, 
I think the Day of Reckoning was the first. They weren't the first Saudi show because, and no. I think uh, AJ had fought Ruiz over there. And uh, yeah, yeah, AJ, AJ fought Ruiz over there. Yeah, he yeah. fought over there as well. Maybe. No, nah, AJ, because because I remember <laughs> it's funny that yeah, AJ fought Ruiz because I remember Fury like digging AJ out about fighting in Saudi, and then right, little, yeah, yeah, little, yeah, yeah. Little, little holds. So and not like, was over there. Back to it, like the day of reckoning, like in terms of like you say promotion and stuff outside of the ring, that was the first time I think for everybody, even like AJ, and obviously AJ been at massive shows, but like I think the day of reckoning was was mad the way they did it. For me, like when I got off the plane, business class, like bro, man's not following business class. The like, camera follows you into the flipping uh, you tea, flowers. Take, your bag, <laughs> flowers. Take, take, take your bags, give you tea, put you on a little cart tin, drive you here, drive you there, sit you down. Bro, it's pan. Like it's calm still. I can't even lie. Like that that was mad. That was mad. But like in my mind, you're there to do a job. I'm kind of focused on the fight. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm thinking about the fight. Um but not like just every day there was something else. Like on Monday, you go to his excellency's house, then Tuesday there was a Oh, you went to his house? Yeah, we went to his house like three times. Bro, we all had dinner. I was sitting down, like I was sitting next to big baby Miller and his dad. Then I had Bivol, I'm sitting next to Bivol, I'm chatting to Bivol, he's telling me he's trying to make weight, like, bro, it's mad, like, for me to be sitting next to, I'm, like, proper look up to man like Bivol and, you know. Biv um, yeah, that's, that, that's crazy, He's over man. there with his missus and AJ's over there, like, it's, like, we're all on a big table, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. then, like, literally, like, I'm sitting, like, across from, like, off a tire, he's over there, everyone's just, like, next to each other, do you know what I mean? Um... So is that, that weird for you, though, as a fighter? Though, like, because you're sitting there, obviously your opponent's sitting opposite you, yeah. really. You're eating dinner. It's yeah. a bit like, it's very personal, is it? That's, that's got to be a bit weird, though, isn't it? Uh, Strange, or was it just you kind different. of thought, this is what it is, so... Different, but obviously we're in Saudi, like, yeah, everyone's on their Nothing. best bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't see well, one fight breaking out. A lot of the fighters, to be job. fair, like, especially, with, I just speak for myself, especially for me, like, there was no that like, we didn't really know each other. He didn't know me. I didn't know him. Like before the fight, kind of thing. Like we weren't really meant to fight each other. There's no build up to our fight, so there's not it's not like a personal kind of. And I think there were a few fights like that. Do you know what I mean? Um, obviously, AJ and Baby Miller had a little bit of thing back and forth. But even that, even that was mute compared to what they've been like in the past, to be honest with you. So I would yeah, just but like I said, I think guys are just in Saudi that like, people are just behaving. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, it was it was it was a good experience, you know, like obviously my thing obviously going out there and, and performing well is um was the important most important, important thing. Wasn't it? Oh, no, it's, a, it's a good experience. But you know from you got there on Sunday night and fighting the I'm fighting the following Saturday or whatever it was. I'm just thinking about the fight. Do you know what I See, mean? Now? Correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong as well. Sorry to interrupt, but you're fighting and the timing's over there as well. You're fighting like early hours of the morning, isn't it? No, I was fighting, I think, bro, at like 7.30 p.m. 7.30 p.m.? Oh, they're a couple of hours behind. Yeah. No, no, no. We're, they were ahead. I think I fought when it was at like 5.30. Oh, that's what, yeah, yeah. So in UK time, I think it was like 5.30. yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's no, that's an early, yeah, yeah. No, because I was saying because them cars do on, go go on quite late, and I just think about the conditioning, how difficult that must be fighting like early hours of the morning. It's just yeah. But uh, sorry, go on, carry on. The, by the time AJ and and Walden fought, I think it was like early hours of the morning for him. Yeah, mental. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but yeah, yeah. But yeah, no. You were saying obviously about Opateo performing well. Um, obviously, come to the end of round one. Uh, mm. which I think I was shocked when I was watching it, to be honest with you, just how mm. quick it ended, to be brutally yeah. honest with you. Um, kind of, did you take any way, sort of any regrets from that fight in terms of, was it specifically something you'd done or was it just, I mean, Opte is a good boxer. Um, I've, I put him up really highly in that cruiserweight division. Um, mm. But, I mean, for you, I suppose that's the platform that you kind of just want to market yourself on. So to if look good in the fight. fight. I'll just talk about the fight for a minute, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Opataya, going into the fight, had never knocked anybody out like that, like that yeah. I've seen, like with one shot kind of thing. Um, 
he's a he's a he's a combination puncher you know mm -hmm. in boxing with we say he puts them together well do you know what i mean like he puts his shots together well like he's fast and he's accurate um and he's shown that and i guess before he fought me uh, before we fought he fought jordan thompson and he hit Jordan Thompson with quite a lot of shots. Like, it weren't a one punch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the you know I mean? combination. That's where the dangerous or the, you know, that the label that Opatai has got, that's where it comes from kind of thing. Um, but despite all of that and despite his, you know, how he carries himself and his, um, you know, intensity that people say he carries, he's actually, a, like, if you know what you're looking at, he's a boxer. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's yeah. a boxer, but he's aggressive, you know. Um, he's not like, What's that guy that fought Tank? Uh, the Pitbull. He's not Pitbull, like that. Pit Romero. Pit yeah, Romero. Like, he's got control. Like, Opatai is smart, like clever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in my mind, it was like, despite how they're built, not building him up, but despite how they're portraying him, it was like, he's a boxer. But people, and I was like, people put him against Usyk. This is going to be calm because, in my mind, it's like, I'm a boxer as well. So, this is actually going to be a good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Stylistically, it's going to be calm. It's like, we're both like not massive cruisers, um, both kind of fast, both kind of agile. And I was surprised at how calm it was in there, you know, um, like it, it wasn't super high paced. I could see everything that was going on. There was like, he was fainting a lot. He was bouncing a lot, but there was nothing really going on where, um, like I've, I've been in there with a few guys, like a handful of guys, where you yeah, just know yeah. that oh, this guy's out of my level. Would you, you say that? Mean? Would you say would that that made you a bit too relaxed, or just not, or is just? I, kind fight, of... I think I fight relaxed anyway. I'm not yeah, gonna, yeah. Like, gonna make excuses like, oh, if this, if that. No, like I've had like five weeks to like prepare for man, so I'm not gonna go in there and I, like I was shocked by anything. But um, I remember just drifting to my right, and then he dipped. And I thought, oh my days. Like, <laughs> yeah. And it was like, as he's dipped, it's like, I'm going to, my, I'm, whatever he throws, whether it's a straight, a hook, or an overhand, I'm going to walk into it because of just the way that I'm going. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, one thing that he did really well, like he covered the space, like, bro, he was like, I can only show you with my hands, but he was like over here. Mm. And then in no time, he was like on top of me. Like, you see, when he lands a shot, is that like his foot is literally like right next to my foot. So he's covered the space like really quick, and by the time he did that, it's like I didn't my 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 mind hadn't processed like what was going on. If that makes like it caught me off guard, kind of thing. Mm. He landed the shot, and that was all she wrote, man. But like that was frustrating because like like I was I felt like I was in the fight. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. when like we've seen them one round blowouts. So it's like a one round. The guys just going from post to post, corner to corner. <laughs> like I was I was holding the center of the ring, but you know. Talk is cheap, man. He did he did a job still. He did a job. Yeah. So we have got to tip my hat to him still. But you got you, you I know you said I know you said openly as well though. You want to run back and sparring with him. I feel like, like yeah, I say yeah, run yeah, it back, but not in a disrespectful way, but like run it back sparring. Sparring. Just because it's like an anti-climax, you know what I mean? And I yeah. feel like he is, you know, he is the best in the world, you know, he carries that thing. It's like I don't agree that he's like invincible, unbeatable, that kind of thing. He had a tough fight against Brady's recently as well. Um, yeah, but this is boxing, man. Like, I feel like it, come off I, I feel like every fight's different, isn't it? Like, I, I mean, yeah. yeah. But, no, I just like from someone who does it. Like, this is boxing, man. Sometimes the media. He had two really good wins, and then he had still a good win against Breeders. Like, no, it was Breeders, a good win. It was a tough fight, though, but it was a good win. Yeah, but this is boxing. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's not meant course. to be easy. Of course, no, no, of course. Boxing. I think yeah, like, people, people are kind people, of knocking him. Not even knocking him. But I see people in the in the um, comments. Someone called him a hype job, and I was just like, oh, <laughs> people are mad. Yeah, like, he's definitely not a hype job. Um, yeah. He's got a really good chance of pushing on to win. Uh, well, no, that, that thing was just like part of my excitement for that fight was like, forget the ring magazine, forget Saudi. It's like I'm about to mix with the best in the world. Yeah. Like, did, did all the back, like, yeah, if we could go back in time, I would love to, like, you know, spar with Evander Holyfield, spar with David Hay, spar with Johnny Nelson, spar with the, just spar with Usyk, just because you just want to see what it's like. I'm sure as a as an interviewer, you would love to do an interview with like whoever you look up to. It's just one of them things. So yes, when I'm right. mentioning the entire thing, yeah, it's not like a 
a disrespecting but no but it's not though i think you can positively talk yeah 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 i think i think i think you 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 deepen up you your analysis analysis of yourself as with any boxer with the fighting and everything else Mm -hmm. so i feel like you can openly talk about this about sounding disrespectful i -hmm. just feel like the way that media is nowadays a lot of platforms will take anything you say and go yeah and you know like blow it up you know what i'm trying to say it's, yeah. it's so we live in that era now. We live in AI now. Do you know what I'm saying? So mm. it's, it's it's a different thing. But um, mm. when you just going back to that as well, that was very quickly before we do move on. That was a mental time though because you're you're fighting Opatea, dealing with all of that. IBF have stripped him of the belt because mm. they don't see you as uh, in terms of their rankings. Of, yeah, I wasn't uh, in their rankings. I was. You weren't in their rankings. Yeah. So it was just the for the, the was it, ju- it was just for the ring magazine, isn't it? It's for the ring magazine, but it's like I don't know who cares about belts, man. Like if I beat up a tire, like I would have been recognized as do you know what I mean? The guy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. and everybody would have known that kind of thing. So um there being and there being no belt, like it doesn't really matter personally. No, nah. that because it's interesting because for people as well, and I know we've been speaking about belts in this interview, but you mm. I, belts is that that's not the most important thing to you in terms of boxing. I mean, don't get me wrong, becoming a unified champion is a dream and all that, but I suppose just having good performances improving that's probably more of it for you. I say improving, but yeah, like obviously, wins. like obviously, the money, like it's a job at first. And uh, if I just keep it really honest with you, it's like there's a lot of belts in boxing now, you know, there's a there's a you know. How many there's the IBS, there's the WBO, there's WBA, there's WBC. So it's like it took us all these years to find out who was the best heavyweight on the planet. Like we had to wait for Usyk and Fury. You understand? Not, yeah, so yeah. I'm not saying belts don't mean nothing. I ain't saying that, but you know, I think, just, I think there's a lot of politics like, behind them in terms of hold ups. People call them ransom sometimes in holding the belts up, and I think that kind of as I'm saying this is for my opinion. I feel like it, that can kind of delay these big fights. Does that make sense? Yeah, maybe. Politics really, as well, though. Really different like platforms. Get involved in all of that. Or yeah, that's yeah, what I'm I saying. Know, like, I, know. I just think the industry, this whole industry is just cut. Like, it's just like, it's just, the whole thing just... Stinks. You've really, you've really been through it from like top to bottom, yeah. innit? Like everything. Like, you've seen yeah, it all. Exactly. There's so, nothing, there's nothing I feel like just talking to you, and I know we've spoke before previously, yeah. but there's nothing I feel like you you would be surprised by if you saw, if that makes sense. No. It's, if I ain't been through it, somebody else says that I've seen and I'm like, mm, okay. Like, I've looked at yeah. that and I'm like, all right, this is what boxing is kind of thing. So, yeah. um, but no, like, yeah, there's loads of belts. Like, if I beat Opataya, it w- it wasn't an issue for me that there was no IBF because it's like I would have been recognised as, gonna, not just a ring gonna... magazine, but like world champion, the guy that beat the guy. Kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. Opataya, would've... yeah, like, great fighter. Um, I would have loved to have had more rounds to like test myself against him, kind mm. of thing. And I feel like we like would have we would have gelled well. Do you know what I mean? Because we're both boxers, kind of thing. Um, but yeah, this is this is boxing, bro. Like this is big time boxing. You make mistakes. This is what happens. It's been world class opponents, and I think obviously mm. for the arm, so I call them. So I call some of them armchairs, isn't it? Like it's it's very easy to sit back and criticize about what they could have done or what they should have done in the fight, but realistically. You've got split seconds to change something, and yeah, but you know, this that's, is the good that's thing what, about it. Yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the good thing about it. It's like what happened to me could have happened to him. Do you know what I mean? It was just yeah. like he's the one he pulled the trigger. He made the better decision. That's why boxing is so um, intriguing to watch. But right? the, the, yeah, the biggest example of that, and I tell you now, is like where it can happen on the other side. Is you look at like the Povetkin Dillian White fight. That was that was a massive shot. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying. If you look at it, bro, and I'm not I'm not knocking what you're saying, but again, it's like when you look at them on paper, stylistically, what Dylan's good at, what Povetkin is good at, what Dylan's not good at, what Povetkin's not good at, it's not that much of a thing. It's just like yeah, we're from the UK, Dylan's been pushed in our face more yeah, than yeah, Povetkin. It's facts, yeah, yeah. It's I'm facts. Sure it's that. Man don't man don't really speak English as in Povetkin. So it's not really easy to like market him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. this is this is what I'm saying. Like some of these things are so ingrained, but really and truly, it's like 
Povetkin's got bag more, bags more experience than Yeah, he's, he's, you're talking like amateur, you're talking professional. It's it's mental if you look at the so, yeah, like, we view it we view it as an upset kind of and it's like well you know where are we getting our education from do you know what I mean yeah yeah no it's it's true man I, I hear I hear what you're saying it's it's definitely something we push but obviously you're going on to then you thought sort of Chef Clock that oh, was recently yeah I feel like that was the worst performance I've had what 19 fights that was the worst performance yeah. And obviously, you know, going into the upper tire fight, 17 and 0 as a pro, 3 and 0 as an amateur. I've never really, I've never lost because because on the back of that upper like, tire fight, yeah, God, I'm thinking like I've, I don't know what it's like to lose, you know. Mm. I come out of the upper tire fight, and it's kind of like a one round, you know, knockout. I'm thinking like not like what the hell has happened because like I said, this is boxing, but with the Chev Clark fight, it's like I had time to process what was going on. Mm. Uh, um, look, Chev is, Chev is cool. So I don't want to say anything like, like, no, like no, Chev, no, 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 not out of place. Yeah, Chev, like... And Chev's beat me. So he's earned the right, but like, yeah. I feel like that's a fight that I, I really like should have won. I feel like I'm a better fighter than Chev. Like it's, talk it's... Deep because he won the fight. Do you know what I mean? But, um, that one, yeah, that was my worst performance, man. Like that, that one, that one really feels like a loss. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like, I feel like I gave it away. Do you know what I mean? That's just the reality. Yeah, with, so. with, but you, because you come out of the, obviously off the back of the upper tire fight, but obviously after a couple of weeks, I'd probably say like positive going into the next one. So obviously that probably would be one of the disappointing factors for you. Would just be n n more. Just you expected more from yourself. Is that what you're saying? Just um, I'm just better than what I did. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like that's just probably the best way I could say. It. And and you know what? Like it's not every, not every, not every. I'm not saying it was Chev's best performance either. That's not the narrative. But I'm just saying for me, it's like that was the fight. Like losing that hurt. Like because I should have won. Do you know what I mean? Like. I'm I'm so much better than what what I did, and it's not an excuse thing. But it's so much better than what I did. Like it was such a messy fight. Um, yeah. Whereas with the Opatia one, it's like Opatia earned it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Everything that happened in the fight, like he earned it. Like he made that happen. Do you know what I mean? Whereas like I feel like I kind of gave it to Chev. Um, mm. I gave him that thing. That so that 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 one hurts like a lot more. The Opatia one didn't really hurt me. I'll be honest. I know there was a picture. Honestly, you hurt. I don't, the floor. Mean, I don't mean physically. Yeah. I don't yeah, mean physically, yeah. I don't I just mean like I well we go like, we go back to what you was like obviously in the gym after a couple of weeks, which you're open about where you was on the floor like that, joking about, and yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, that's yeah. just you and it's just like uh all tongue in cheek, isn't it? I get twisted. Like I can laugh about this one, but it's more like yeah, like this one, this one that like, I should have won yeah. that still. Like I really like that was my worst performance that like yeah. ever. Amateur and pro. And obviously, obviously going on, because uh, I've got, I, I do have some quick questions to ask you as well, off of specifically you. But before we do, you're looking to get active soon, get back into it, or just keep you. Obviously, you said before, keep yourself ticking over. Um, yeah, but I mean, any... I, I, uh, like <laughs> there was one stage where I was like, after the Chef Clark fight, I was like, oh my days! Like, if I'm losing to this caliber of fighter for me and that's not a knock to Chev by the way like I know it sounds like one but in my mind it's like, if I'm losing to this caliber of fire like I, I ain't I need to pack it in like slyly slyly I was like yeah not because I'd had two losses on the trot you know and all this kind of thing but because you know better fighters than me have had more losses than that kind of thing it was just like raw like I've never been in a situation where I've really underperformed like that like if I've been beat, like upper tire, I've been beat. Do you know what I mean? But it's like I've never really like underperformed nowhere near as that, if that makes sense. So I was just like raw, like if this is what I'm doing, if this is what I'm making all these sacrifices to do, I'm just gonna pack it in because this is dead. Do you know what I mean? Like that's that's yeah, how yeah, I yeah. felt immediately after the Chef Clark fight. I said I can't be losing. That's emotion and adrenaline though, isn't it? I think a, yeah, it's like a little bit, but then it was kind of like as time settled, I was like, no, you know what? Let me not 
let me not think like that. Let me just get back to it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I still, like, I think I'll know when there's, no, I think a fighter knows when there's nothing more in, in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's not my thing. I was just pissed off for that like, performing so poorly. Um, yeah. So, yeah, no, I'll be back. Like, I'd like to be active. Like, bro, if I was given a date, I'll be back to it still. Like, mm -hmm. I ain't got a date, obviously, right now. Like, coming off two losses, obviously, it's like, the, the, the road back is going to be slightly like slightly long. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if I'll, like, off the back of the upper tire fight, to come back and to fight a good Olympian prospect like Chef Clark for the British title is a good thing. I don't know if I'll walk back into a big fight like that. I don't know if that fight will be there, that kind of fight. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll no, see. it's interesting. It's interesting, man. And obviously, before we head off, because I know you've given me quite a bit of time tonight, um, I do want to ask you as well, when you talk about boxers, because you are, like you said to me before, you wanted to spoil these guys, Evander Holyfield's Hayes. But in terms of your... I don't your, I don't want that to be misunderstood, misinterpreted. It's not that I wanted to spoil No, them. no, no. As in from a risk like, to when learn. You put yourself against the Yeah, bed. yeah, yeah. That's what oh, I'm let saying, just, yeah. Let me just see where I'm at. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's just uh, it's hyper, hyper No, hyper. no, no, of course. But I'm saying hypothetically, you, you, yeah. you want to test yourself against these guys because yeah. uh, just to see where you're at. But in terms of boxers, who mm. did you kind of... Who did you kind of, if I had to ask for maybe three guys that you kind of, I maybe watched? I don't know. I don't. Idolized is probably not the word. I don't think. I think it's a very strong word people use nowadays. But in terms of fighters that you look up, looked up to, and thought, raw like at the higher level of boxing, who were kind of your top three that you enjoy watching? Top three: uh, James Tony. Mm. Roy Jones and Mike McCallum. Yeah. 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 Roy Roy Jones, man. That's um, a lot. Of, that's on a lot of people's list still. I just like Roy Jones's athleticism. I like James Tony's like relaxedness, like his inside game. Mm. And I feel like Mike McCallum just like an elite boxer. Just an elite. Like he could do everything. Yeah. Like he counterpoint. Oh, bro. He's just like he's fit, he's durable, he could take a shot. Yeah. But, Jab like he can make it boring if he wants to. Like he's just he can get rid of you. Like <laughs> Mike McCallum, obviously underrated, under promoted, I guess. But um, yeah, James Tony, Roy Jones, Mike McCallum. I'm not. I'm not sure if you're going to answer this in the same way. But past or present, if you could pick a fight tomorrow to fight, who would it be? For me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For you, past or present. Uh, upper tire, yeah, again, yeah, yeah, yeah. upper tire. For Interesting. Sure. Do you know what? I do you know what? I for some reason, yeah, I thought you would have said someone like I don't know, David Hay. That's that's no, always no, one no. a lot of people mention. Nah, no, 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 no. upper tire, like. I like yeah, over that. Yeah, no, it's a redemption. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear it. Talking about redemption, bro. Like that one there is like it's a hard feeling. Like, have you boxed? Have you boxed before? A little bit. It's a hot like so you know when you're in there, it's like certain styles that like, slightly would have gelled. Um like, and you kind of just know it from like sparring the guy or being in there with mm. the guy. It's like that that would have been one of them still, you know. That's he's, a, that, yeah. he's nice and, he's like nice and aggressive. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um hasn't got like this like I don't want to say he hasn't got defense because he has, but he hasn't got like the greatest defense, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Defense is his offense, like his aggression. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. Me being a counter puncher is like this is going to be a good, um, a good fight. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to mix it, even if there was no one there. Like, I don't really care about people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, that's not, it's not about redemption. Like it will be a good. Nah. It will be a good fight. It will be a good scrap. Do you know what I mean? No, nah, I hear it, man. It's it's, it's crazy, man. Obviously. For people to find you, or where can they find you? It's it's Elisora on Instagram, isn't it? It's just type the name and it'll come up, man. But it's if they there. don't want to find me, don't worry, I don't want to be found. <laughs> Ellis. <laughs> no, uh, Ellis is on Ellis is on an unsociable one, man. Bro, <laughs> you see the boxing world? Yeah. Um, but no, it's Ellis underscore Zoro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what it, you saying man? for this weekend. Talk to me. I need to ask you. Who you got for this weekend? I see. You know you. what? Because you said that, this is gonna have to come out quick. I hear it, and we will get it out quick. Um, who have I got for this weekend? Saturday. Mm. 
what if we talk about the fights. You know what? Oh, I think... uh, go from Dan Aziz. So Dan Aziz yeah. has got a comeback fight. Yeah, I, I think I think I think Dan Dan's gonna look to off the back of the Bawatsi fight get mm -hmm. some rounds in um, and like just get back to maybe I, he said it himself get back to sort of just get back on track to where he needs to be if that means him getting rounds which I think it might do but I mm -hmm. think he'll win um, mm -hmm. I I wouldn't say drag it out because you can't really drag if there's an opportunity to go for go for the kill. Or turn mm -hmm. it on. You're not gonna just stop because mm -hmm. you want rounds. But I do think that he'll probably try and experiment with a couple of things. And yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, obviously Dan Aziz um, in that fight. Obviously you've got the uh, Massey uh, Isaac Chamberlain. Mm -hmm. uh, I've I've got Chamberlain winning that fight. Just more of a boxer for me. Mass Massey's more power though. Jack Massey's got power. Obviously, I know he moved up. He fought, and I think Savage Dan was saying this, like he fought a Parker that was probably not full of confidence at the time, but yeah. he did hurt him. He did hurt him. And, you know, so it, it'd be interesting to see. But obviously, if I go off like Isaac Chamberlain recently, I'm, I'm going to say Isaac. I wouldn't say it's like a resurgence since mm -hmm. the Okoli fight, but it was. he's always had it. You know this, obviously, know sparring him. So, but he's, he's really like, Obviously, he's had a lot go on, personal life and everything else. And I feel like he's just mentally there. And you see, Isaac, him. fam, there was a stage where, I don't know. Yeah, I'll say this. I'll say this. This is my opinion. Isaac used to be one of the slickest boxers. Mm. But like, he, there was a stage where it's like, I don't know when it was, but there was just a stage where people saying he can't punch, he can't crack, blah, blah, blah. And I think... Like, just questioning his punching power and questioning his toughness. I don't really know why, to be honest. Um, and I'm just keeping it 100%. I'm not, like, gas nine. I think he went through a stage of, like, trying to prove he can bang, trying to prove he's, like, tough. Mm. It's like he's done, he's done that, obviously, and continues to do that. But, like, I think if Isaac had stuck to, like, that... And to be fair to Bobby, I think Bobby's... We see it with Lowell, like when he fought Lowell, like Bobby's got him he back. Dominated that fight, bro. Bobby's dominated. got him back doing some of that, you know, doing that boxing kind of thing. But like Isaac has the ability to um to like really like he's mad slick. Like, yeah. and I feel like he would have he would have beat Chris Bellingham Smith very easily if he just kind of like didn't try and prove a point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then he would be, you know, he he pro he possibly would be where um where Chris is, but um, yeah. I think if he boxes like he did against Lawal, and if he like uses his feints, uses his jab, I think he can keep Massey at bay kind of thing. I think if he tries to hold his feet and try to out tough it like he did with Chris, I don't feel like that would be the, I'm not saying he'll lose, but I don't really feel like that would be a good idea to be honest. Yeah. And I feel like Bobby will probably, and Isaac probably know this anyway, but um, yeah, Isaac used to be really a mad slick star. A mad, yeah, yeah. mad slick star. What about um, Chris and Richard? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, like, I, yeah, just want to touch as well, obviously, uh, before I talk about Ben and Chris, uh, Richard, um, obviously, yeah, obviously you've got uh, some of the younger prospects, obviously, on the cards as well, like Fran Hennessy. Uh, so, she, obviously, I've, I just think she's probably just in a learning learning phase right now. She's only 3-0. So mm -hmm. she's she'll she'll get there, but she's she's doing really well. She's doing the right things inside mm -hmm. and outside the ring. So I think it's all positives for her. Um yeah. Ben Whitaker and Ezra is an interesting one, not because I think Ben Whitaker's gonna brush him in like one or two rounds, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. But the way Ezra's got himself onto this card, I can't knock him. I can't yeah. I can't I can't knock it. Yeah, I can't. I listen from what yeah. I've been told, that was not a setup. That was yeah, I mean. This is it's boxing these days, isn't it? Like, he's, uh, listen, there's man, a lot yeah. of other fights that you know what? I won't even, yeah, I won't even comment that because yeah. I think Ben will fucking beat a lot of these light heavyweights right now. But so. I, the, the 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 light heavy fight for Ben Whitaker that I want to see is him fight Willie Hutchinson. I think that's a good fight for him at some point. I don't some know fight. if that's like at the moment. Year. Willie is back on ability wise. Yeah, Ben can. I think Ben on ability wise, Ben can kind of go mix it with him. Yeah. 
But I think obviously yeah. when he's meant to be fighting Boatsy, like it's a different. They're in a yeah, different... yeah, they're, they're on a different trajectory. But it would be styles wise, that'd be a good fight for me. Obviously, when you yeah. talk about the main card, Billy Sif and Riapo, yeah, I mean the first fight was arguably close, um, and I don't know, man. Like I, I just think that Richard's power is yeah. is something else, and I just. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, well, Ellis, you know, you know what, like you sure. saying, you know, but I'm saying you sparred with him. Richard thrown thrown a right hand. I sparred Richard for my debut one time. This is back in 2017 November. <laughs> yeah, he threw a right hand and it missed. Yeah, but I, fam, the sound <laughs> it made <laughs> like as it went past me, I was like, yeah. oh my days. And like so, and obviously, even though I'm not in the ring, like when I'm seeing the, the damage that he's causing on these opponents it's like yeah. he can lay still like so i don't yeah. know like um, and chris, 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 chris has got hit. heart though he's got yeah, heart chris gets, hit. chris gets hit you know chris gets yeah. hit and he can take a whack because he took yeah. it against i wasn't yeah. i wasn't impressed massively like i say of his last fight like he got his opponent yeah. out of there with a big shot but obviously Masternak, i had him win him the that, that yeah. fight up until that wow. shot i agree still. um but then, like, and then like, again, this is this is like, a narrative though, because Masternak's not an any man, so he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. he's been I do in feel there. Like this will turn up for this one, like proper, and I don't know if yeah, there will yeah. be any of them mistakes. I think it'll be a little bit more because it's domestic fight, stadium fight, world title against you know like a guy that's beat him, the only guy that's beat him. So he's gonna be on it, bro. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's gonna it's it. gonna it's gonna be an interesting fight, and obviously it's in Crystal Palace, South London's another big card, man. Um, and as I said at the moment, they're the, domestically. I think Greeny said it uh, when we was talking to the boxer guys that I think domestically they're doing everything they can to do what they need to do within the UK. I think obviously Frank and Eddie are doing their thing everywhere else, but yeah, no, domestically right. they're filling the shows. Um, yeah, this has been impressed by this show, the yeah. Von Miller in the show as well. Yeah, uh, from head to toe. I, I, Obviously, they've like I said to you, like as well with with Boxer at the moment. Obviously, they had the Wardley Clark fight, which I think was yeah. a big fight as well. Um, yeah. I'd be interested to see them come back in the ring. And a point that I wanted to touch on before we go as well that you said earlier on, when you yeah. said about the broken noses, that was where I wanted to mention. It's like in those mm. moments, Wardley, like at one point, like the nose was gone, and yeah. people don't realize at that point, Ellis. Yeah, how difficult is it? When you're in that moment, and if something like that happens, even breathing, it's just yeah. like it's yeah, it's harder, it's harder, but it, yeah. it, it depends what the fight is. Like that fight there, for example, was a kind of durability kind of fight, you know. So when your nose is broken, it's like you're taking one, you're giving another one. If you're in a fight like and you got an opponent like Ben Whitaker in front of you and he's he's broke your nose, and then you hit him and you swing and you can't hit him, and he's making you miss and he's he's turning you, then you're starting to feel that raw, like this is long. Do you know what I mean? But in yeah. that fight with Clark and Wardley, you know, it's I feel like you got a lot more, I don't know, uh, enthusiasm or momentum to kind of keep to hang in there, kind of thing, you know. But yeah, it does affect you. It does affect you still. Um, but yeah, obviously, I know I know for you as well, um, be excited to watch that card just probably as a boxing fan more than anything. Yeah, so, yeah, sure. Um, I'll be locked in for it. Obviously, Ellis Ellis will be joining us as well. And I give a big honourable shout-out to MTGP before we go and BXGP, uh, which are a Muay Thai Grand Prix, boxing Grand Prix show. Um, so Ellis will be there, obviously, next week uh, for parts of it, uh, just sort of come in watching a couple of fights. And, um, mm -hmm. and a, a, another show at not Crystal Palace Stadium, but the National Sports Centre. So um, they filled out last time there, mm -hmm. 2,000 people. Uh, this what this card parts of it is on the zone. They've got their own pay per view as well, I believe, for the undercards. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, if people, I believe there's still tickets, so people can go via the link in their bio uh, to buy some tickets uh, to come down for that as well. Um, just seeing some, I want to call it what are we calling it, grassroots boxing, man. So yeah, yeah. it's um, now nah, it's where it's listen, man. That's where everyone started their journey in terms of where they're mm. at. So yeah, come down if you can support it. Um, mm. I've been Paolo. This has been Ellis. Ellis, thank you very much for joining today, man. Um, oh it is Boxing Corner, Boxing Corner Casuals podcast. Find us on social media, Boxing Corner Casuals podcast. Um, audio, we're everywhere. YouTube, we're there. Um, like, share, subscribe. I hate saying that, you know, but yeah, we got to say it, man. Run it up.
yeah, uh, don't don't be shy. Log in and run up. Don't don't be broke. It's free to it's free to make an account. Just want to let people know. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> um, yeah, guys, we'll be back again for another episode soon. Peace.